Well, hey folks, Real Honesty with Drum Ritalin, back with another Top 10. Like my Top 10 Best of Super Juniors matches New Japan Pro Wrestling put on this year, I'm going to do a Top 10 matches, best matches, the New Japan Pro Wrestling has put on due to the lighter schedule and the fact the talents are allowed to go a little more all out. In fact, really all out because sometimes they can have a few days off afterwards. It was really hard to narrow this down to 10. I actually have about 20 matches written down on my list so far. Now, it'll probably end up being a Top 20, Top 25 by the end of the year. But I figured doing the top 10 now would be nice, and that way you guys, we could have a fun, healthy debate since people seem to enjoy my New Japan reviews. Let me know which ones you are <coughs> you would have put on your own top 10. Leave them in the comments if you like. If you guys are on Twitter, you guys can hit me up on Twitter. I always put my Twitter handle in the description. And at the end of this video, if you guys haven't seen my uh, Best of Super Juniors um, countdown or a couple other new japan reviews i've done i will put them at near the end of this video so there will be some thumbnails that'll appear as i as i finish the closing so just want to warn you guys about that so again there's been a host of great great matches and just fantastic matches and i'm going to get right into it so yes some of these may be a bit controversial with the replacement but i have my reasons for it <laughs> number 10 okada versus tatsuya naito wrestle kingdom 12 Got to be honest, at first I wasn't sure if I was going to put this on there, and then the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, do I put Okada versus ZSJ, Zack Sabre Jr., or do I put Okada versus Naito? And Okada versus ZSJ was very, very good, but there was very, very little doubt that Okada would retain. Going into this, there was there was some doubt that Okada would retain, and that Naito would, find, would beat him and would be able to capture the title that Okada had taken from him, you know, over a year before. And quite frankly, I mean, you could argue he should have. Now, it ended up working out in the end, especially uh, Dominion and Osaka Joe Hall. But, boy, you almost wish that Naito would have won, and it seemed like he should have. I mean, hitting Destino out of nowhere, doing some really, really good stuff. <clears throat> Him and Okada just having a tremendous match, and really keeping the crowd into it when it was a long show. Wrestle Kingdom was a long show, and Omega and Jericho had just had a really, really good match that I will cover a little bit later in this countdown. But Okada and Naito had a really, really good match. Very, very good main event. Two tremendous workhorses, two tremendous athletes, and they deserve to close the show. This was the hot angle, even though Omega versus Jericho was right underneath it. This deserved to close the show. It was good stuff. I enjoyed it, and yeah, Okada retained. You could argue that maybe that shouldn't have happened, but it ended up, again, working out in the end. So now we move on to number nine. <coughs> Tanahashi versus Minoru Suzuki. New beginning in Sapporo day one. The fact that Tanahashi lost the IC title after successfully defending it against Jay White at Wrestle Kingdom was a bit shocking. Now, it's not that I didn't think that Minoru was cap wasn't capable of beating Tanahashi. I didn't think that they'd take the title off of Tanahashi like they did. But they did because Suzuki just kept wrenching on the leg and wrenching on the leg and wrenching on the leg. And it was great stuff. It was great shit. <clears throat> Some tremendous wrestling. Tanahashi just wouldn't quit. The referee finally had to call for the bell. And it was great stuff. And if you want to hear my full thoughts on these matches, you can always seek out these particular reviews. I will, of course, like I said, put a playlist, you know, of all my New Japan reviews. If there is a particular one that you want, you don't want to try to go seek it out, and you are on Twitter, let me know. I will tweet it to you. But I enjoyed watching both New Begin and Sapporo um, shows. They were really shocking. You had a shocking IC title change, and even more shocking U.S. title change when Jay White beat Kenny Omega. And you had the Golden Lovers reunite. And I want to take a moment <coughs> to mention when the, the Tanahashi versus Suzuki, by the way. Tremendous match. Suzuki, even though he only held the IC title, IWGP IC title, for just three months before Naito beat him at uh, New Japan Hinokuni, it, it was great stuff. And I was really, really shocked to see Naito win. And that worked out in the end. It's like everything seems to work out, even if it's shocking. You don't quite understand at first. But when the Golden Lovers reunited, you know, Ibushi and... Omega had that hug, and it was great stuff, and uh, New Beginning of Sapporo, you know, day two ended so well. When they were able to te when they were able to team up against Cody and Murray Skrull, and they were at Cork and Hall, um, I believe it was on a right, it was on a rising day one or two. Forgive me, forgive me if I don't remember the exact day. I think it was on a rising day uh, one or two. But Cork and Hall holds like 1,500 people, and I'm not knocking it. It's a great venue, and it's got some great stuff, but just hearing the crowd, you would have, and I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. You would have thought 10,000 people were in that place. 
the play, the fans just exploded for when Omega and Ibushi were able to reunite and they were able to see them team up. That That is the great kind of emotion that you need <coughs> in your wrestling. And that is why I love a lot of the Japanese crowds because they get truly invested in the product and it's really nice. But yeah, that, that was a really good moment. I enjoyed that. I may sprinkle a couple of those in on this. And then you had number eight, Tetsuya Naito versus Chris Jericho at Dominion and Osaka Joe Hall. This is where the shocking IWGP Intercontinental title switch happened again. It was the second IC title switch in a couple months. And I was really surprised to see Jericho win. I, I thought there was a possibility, but I'm like, okay, if Jericho's only going to appear here and there, here and there, are they really going to want to risk devaluing the title if Jericho holds it for a few months? Now there's a possibility that, he may, that Jericho may face evil pretty soon. <clears throat> and evil may become a, a you know... Uh, you know, a singles champion once again. I believe, I don't know if he's actually captured a title recently, but I, you know, forgive me, I'm trying to remember the history of a lot of championships in New Japan. So if he won a title a couple years ago, I apologize for not remembering that. I would love to see him as Intercontinental Champion, but just Jericho beating Naito, and they had a really good match. I wasn't so sure about this. Now, it wasn't as good as the match he had with Kenny Omega, which I will get to a little bit later. But what I enjoyed about it was just the fact that he had the table usage. They had, you know, <clears throat> Jericho was able to beat was able to beat down Naito. Naito, it seemed like he took Jericho lightly, and it cost him. And he and with that low blow and the code breaker, one, two, three, and Jericho shockingly won. I remember just not wanting, you know, not wanting to wake anybody up. But it's like, you know, when I was watching, it, I was just so shocked. I was like, I, I during uh, Dominion, I must have had my mouth open just. A bunch of times. I just must have had my mouth open in shock a bunch of times. But it was really, really good stuff. I really did enjoy this. <clears throat> it, was, it, was, it was a tremendous match and a really shocking title switch. Number seven, Hiromu versus Ishimori. Uh, the Best of Super Juniors finals. I almost wanted to put another Best of Super Juniors match on here, but I decided to just go with the finals because that was the buildup and the crescendo of this actual tournament, and it was great. I mean, I wasn't sure how it was going to... Even though I know Ishimori's really good, and even though I know Hiromu's really good, I wasn't sure how this was going to go. I was like, okay, I was like, all right, interesting. Okay, interesting. But I was like, I thought Ishimori win. And the reason that I actually put this on here, I mean, Ishimori winning wouldn't have been... <clears throat> what would have not had me opposing it at all. But the fact that Hiromu won was just shocking. He won with the same sequence here as he did with the next match, but it was pretty cool how um, the trophy got broken. Naito accidentally broke the trophy. And Hiromu's, um, you know, because it was a wing trophy, so he's like, you know, Hiromu's doing this with the uh, with one of his hands, like, for the trophy, which was really funny. And Daryl must have been pleased because, you know, the trophy and Mr. Belt is coming home because Hiromu versus Osprey at uh, Duntaku... <clears throat> or not Dentaku Naito, Dominion in Osaka. I got a little bit ahead of myself. At Dominion in Osaka happened, and that was really, really good. I enjoyed that. It was tremendous. I wasn't sure if Hiromu was going to get the victory. I thought maybe Osprey will get, maybe Osprey will hold it for a little bit longer. Not opposed to it, because it was really shocking, but he won with virtually the same sequence against Ishimori as he did against Osprey. And it was great storytelling. And he was able to take Mr. Belt home, which made Daryl even more happy, and Daryl should be pleased. All hail Daryl. Uh, Fale, don't you get near him again. <clears throat> but that was good stuff. They worked really, really well together. Hopefully Osprey can maybe have some time off to deal with his neck issues and stuff like that. Yeah, this was a tremendous match. And you'll forgive me if I look down a little bit as I'm looking at my notes and keep myself a little bit on track. Number five, Okada versus Tanahashi at Dontaku Night 2. Now, I gotta admit, I actually thought that Tanahashi was going was gonna to get here. I thought of all the challengers, I was like, okay, is that, it's, it's like, maybe he won't get it. Maybe he won't, because <clears throat> they're going to play up this narrative, and I'm like, oh, God, he might do it. And he hit two. He went for one high fly flow, and then went for another, and I'm like, he's got it. He's got it, and then Okada got his knees up. But there was just really, these two have always had some great, great matches. The, the series of matches that they've had over the years, and yeah, you can call it a series of matches, but that was just really, really good. They, they always excelled whenever they did some great things <clears throat> whenever that what whatever great things they were doing whether it was just fighting for honor whether it was fighting over the iwgp title 
it didn't really matter. These two could always put together a classic. I think this may be one of Tanahashi's last classics. I think he's got a few more in him before they relegate him just to being on tag teams. And I'm not, I mean, he's 41-42. I mean, and that's not old by any stretch of the imagination. But he's fought through injuries, and he's still got injuries, and he's just done so many great things. You're thinking he's going to have to slow down eventually. I mean, not everybody can stay strong forever. Everybody's got to be in tag teams eventually to take the load off. I think Tanahashi's maybe got one more IWGP heavyweight title reign in him. I think he's got one more. Might come next year. <clears throat> maybe. He might be the one to dethrone Ibushi. Because I think Ibushi's being Omega at Wrestle Kingdom 13. I'm going to stick with that. Somehow it's going to happen. I, I mean, I don't know. It probably won't. But Okada and Tanahashi was tremendous. And uh, Duntaku, Night 1 and 2 were really fun events. Especially Night 2. And then I had Okada versus ZSJ at number four. And then I thought about it. And I go, okay, I got a lot of Okada on here. Let's give the Super uh, Juniors a, some love. And even though that was a great match, it really, really was. Have to give credit, Marty Skrull and Will Ospreay at Sakura Genesis. Sweet Jesus, that freaking Spanish fly bump off the apron. How is Osprey still alive? Is Osprey still alive? Are we sure he's not just a zombie at this point? Um, <clears throat> a really agile zombie that apparently hates pug dogs. Check out his Twitter feed. I'm not really sure what the deal with that is. I don't mind pug dogs. But whatever. Him and his girlfriend are happy, so good for them. And B's happy. I believe that's her name. B Priestley? I think that's how you say her name. She's happy that she got her pug. Hooray! Um... <clears throat> But yeah, Skrull and Osprey always had great matches. Uh, it almost put the four away from Wrestle Kingdom that um, had Kushida and Hiromu in it. I almost put that one on there, and I go, no, I want to go with this, because this is one where I expected it to be good. I did not expect it to be as good as it was, because they'd had so many matches already. I was like, okay, how are they going to top this? And they topped it by Osprey nearly dying and gashing his head open. And he beat Skrull. <clears throat> that was good. I really enjoyed that. But, Osprey, please stop doing those bumps, please. Please stop with the apron bumps. I don't want people to die. I know that it is all a, is a contact sport and it's hard hitting and stuff like that. But please stop doing the apron bumps. I would rather people not die or get paralyzed or worse. I'm not really sure there's anything worse than those two. I really am not. Especially the first one. But anyway, Skrull and Osprey did have a really, really good match. I really enjoyed it. And then... Number three, and this one may surprise some people, even though I mentioned it in other reviews, and even though I mentioned it on my Strong Style Evolved review, because it's the one match that I'm putting on from there, even though that was a pretty good card. Golden Lovers versus Young Bucks, the main event. Yeah, I put a Young Bucks match on here. I know people are shocked by that. This is nothing... I, <clears throat> this is not saying I'm a fan of the Young Bucks, because, sorry, I'm not. I still think they're video gamey wrestlers. I don't think that they're bad people, but I have to get I have to give credit mainly for their matches for this year, especially in the past few months, and a whole lot more psychology. And yes, they are the current never uh, open weight six man tag champs along with Marty Skrull, and the current IWGP heavyweight tag team champions. So hey, you know, and 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 they really do move a lot of merch. They have a lot of big fan. They have a big fan base, and <clears throat> they seem easy to work with, and they seem like they're liked by a lot of the guys. So that's great. They're just not always my cup of tea. But this match in particular, great stuff. It was about seeing which team would be the best. Where'd Kenny Omega's loyalties lie? Abushi saving that was either Matt or, Matt or Nick. I don't remember which one. I think it was Matt. When they were going to do a double superplex. Abushi and Omega were going to do that. And I think Abushi basically saved Matt from falling. And it would have been really, really bad. <clears throat> but it was like a 30 plus minute match. And it was damn good. It was damn good psychology. Um, you know, Golden Lovers got the win. Because of course they should have. And nothing against the Bucks. But, I mean, that was the whole point. The Golden Lovers were put together to get some wins. And now they're going to you know, they're, they're gonna have some issues com coming up. Because I still think that Ibushi Omega match is happening. Even if it's going to take six months. But the Bucks wanted Omega to basically not take it easy on him. And it was great storytelling. It was great moves, too. Don't get me wrong. But the storytelling in this match in particular was really, really strong. 
pun very much intended, and was a really enjoyable, really enjoyable contest. So whether I like the Bucks or not, I got to put them over here. That was really great stuff. It really was. <coughs> Number two, Omega versus Jericho, Wrestle Kingdom 12. Pretty much the, I mean, there were a, a load of great matches on Wrestle Kingdom 12. They really did load that card up like crazy. This is the match of the show. Not Okada and Naito, all due respect to Okada and Naito. All due respect, and all due respect to Tetsuya Naito, and I feel bad that the two Naito matches I put on here were both championship matches they lost, because Naito's been a uh, part of some really, really good matches. Had I done a top 15, this would have included the match he had with Minoru Suzuki at, at Hinokuni. Um, Naito's just a tremendous wrestler. He really is. He is super popular no matter what he does, and it's, the crowd just explodes whenever he comes out, and that's great. But anyway, no, Omega and Jericho, just the build of it. And I actually, actually did have to go back and look at the build of it before I watched um, Wrestle Kingdom 12, just to see how did they build this. And they built it perfectly. Jericho, the Wiley veteran, he got the most out of Omega <clears throat> that I think it, that anybody has seen in a number of months. And it's not that Omega took time off or, you know, took any, or took any, you know, backseat to anybody or, you know, stepped back at all. I'm not, I'm not implying that Omega didn't give it his all. But I think he got so much out of Omega for this and really helped boost Omega's level even higher than it already was among New Japan fans and among a lot of American fans. Um, and I'm not, giving, I'm not just giving full credit to Jericho. Omega brought it, and it was great stuff. And Omega and Jericho put on one fucking fantastic match and will probably still be in the top five. By the end of the year. So personally, I loved it. Now, okay, did I care for everything? No, I didn't care for that fire extinguisher shit and that kind of stuff, but whatever. It's their match. It's They're the ones out there taking the bumps. I didn't care for it, but hey, they still <coughs> had one hell of a contest. One hell of a contest that went so, so long, and yeah, they stalled a bit some. Yeah, I don't want everybody to be going like 100 miles an hour and get injured. They really did have some great matches, uh, some great build-up to this, and a great match here. It was very fantastic. Very well done. Hats off to both guys. I don't wear a hat. And number one, Omega versus Okada, Dominion Osaka. Come on, what, what else do you want me to say? 65, 66 minutes? Something like that. <clears throat> Two out of three falls, no time limit. And Omega finally beat him. Omega finally beat him. I mean... Check out my Dominion Osaka review if you really want to get the full, you know, impact of, like, how I felt. But just this match was absolutely tremendous. Fucking fantastic. Loved it. Apologies if my voice is starting to go out. But, yeah, I was... I, ugh, sorry. Allergies. Anyway, I really enjoyed this match. It's my number one match of the year. It's my number one... It probably is my number one match, period, across stuff I watch, like New Japan, WWE, NXT. I know WWE and NXT are the same thing. Yeah, 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 but you get the point. But this match, Omega Okada, you know, four, is on is my top match of the year. It's going to take a hell of a match to unseat it. We'll see. But anyway, that's what I have to say. What do you guys have to say? You let me know in the comments. Let me know what matches you thought I you would have put on here in your own top ten. Because remember, it's my top ten, but I wanna, I'd love to hear from you guys. And just let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Also, it's been Real Honesty with John Ritlin. Can't wait to see what New Japan does for the next six months and beyond. And I'll see you soon.